My name is Lily Odano. I am CATF's lead on the new Africa Energy Program, which focuses on energy access and the need to decarbonize the global energy system. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we have three challenges which are sitting side by side. First of all, energy poverty is really the, the challenge that we are having almost 600 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa without access to modern electricity services. The second is the issue of underdevelopment, which is really economic development. So we take indicators of development in poverty reduction, in access to education, in access to healthcare, and we realize that Sub-Saharan Africa is lagging the world in all of these indicators. Then the third issue is climate change. Now, even though uh, Sub-Saharan Africa has, has historically contributed the least to climate change, we realize that the region is going to be extremely vulnerable. And that is where our work sits, trying to understand how we thread that needle across energy poverty, underdevelopment, and climate change. For us as CATF, we put a strong role on looking at the energy access challenge, especially when we think energy in contexts like Africa, because the definition of access has been limited to a few light bulbs here and there, there has been a disproportionate focus on options that satisfy that. The typical example is the spread of small-scale solar systems, which are a great start for a lot of communities who are far away from the grid but that it's not enough. Many African governments do not see that as the end of their energy objectives. And so building that vision of an Africa that has access to that high energy that it needs to power that its industries is, is core and it's critical. Elevating that discussion to how we really build wealth beyond lighting a few bulbs at home, that is, a, that is our view of, of energy access. If we do think objectively about where Africa needs to go and we need to be thinking bigger and we need to be thinking more ambitiously about advanced technologies, about super hot drug geothermal, about the transportation sector, we need to be thinking about the role of hydrogen and how that is going to change the need um, in industrial applications and in the transportation sector as we look ahead. At CATF, we think very differently about Africa as a place where we can collectively work with our partners on the ground to build out the new ideas, new opportunities for technologies as we think of navigating and decarbonizing our global energy system. So that would be a locally led policy advocacy agenda, which would be looking at, you know, how do we build an ecosystem for incubating technologies in Sub-Saharan Africa? What do we need? And how do we build support both from the government and from the private sector for it? I think that the general trend has been that um, countries are poor, they burn a lot of fossil fuels, and then they become richer, and that they begin to clean their energy systems. When we think of decarbonization in Africa, it's important to emphasize the point that it's, the context is very different from how we think decarbonization in other parts of the world, especially in the developed countries. Most sub-Saharan African countries are in the stage of still building up their energy system. So the decarbonization in that context is not necessarily changing something that exists. It is really building a foundation for an energy system that is climate friendly. And that is the way to think about um, the transition in Africa as a whole. I see an Africa which is really a leader in the global energy transition. And to give some context to that, currently about 43% of the, of the African population is actually under the age of 15. So we have a very young workforce. And one of the biggest challenges as we look into the future is how do we create jobs and opportunities for this young population? I see a, a future where young Africans are, are leading the charge in terms of defining 
where Africa wants to go and what Africa's role is in the clean energy transition. But most importantly, I see them engaging actively in the research around advanced technologies. I know that a lot of us are familiar with romantic depictions of rural African landscapes, um, but what we are seeing happening on the ground in Africa is quite different. You think Lagos, um, you think Kinshasa, you think Dar es Salaam, you think Luanda, we are seeing huge growth in these urban centers and we have to begin thinking of an energy future that has a space to accommodate the needs of this growing urban population. As we all know, urban centers can really be the sources of innovation and the sources of economic growth. And African cities can offer that if we invest the resources that allow them to incubate and to be the sources of such innovation. And so in the next decades, I envision an Africa which really is going to be that, that incubation ground for the next crop of entrepreneurs and forward-looking thinkers who are going to craft an energy system that will to address the unique needs of African economies and African people. I think that the complexity of the challenge that we have ahead of us depends on how bold we are with the actions that we take. And CATF's approach offers really just that. It's creating an opportunity for us to rethink what we can do with the new markets and the utilities of the future, and to be able to work collectively with them towards reframing and readdressing the challenge that lies ahead of us in a new way. So the challenge is old, but CATF's approach is a really fresh approach and I'm really enthusiastic and I'm hopeful that it's going to bring us much needed change.